Thank you for the introduction. I'm Michael Reichert from Geofabric in Karlsruhe in Germany. And I will talk about vector tiles with the new short breadth schema. What does this talk about? First, I will talk about why we use vector tiles and why we designed a new vector tile schema. Then I will present the vector tile schema itself, um, how to generate, how we generate tiles with this schema, about the community around short bread, and afterwards about using vector tiles for legacy clients. First, the motivation. Everyone does vector tiles now. So we at Geofabric also ask, how should we do vector tiles? How should we produce vector tiles? How should we use them? Because operating a tile server with many different map styles for clients, because the clients want to have the individual map styles, is difficult with raster tiles. You have n map styles, you will need n tile caches. This needs lots of disk space. With vector tiles, you can have multiple map styles, but hopefully one individual tile, one tile cache for all only. So what do, did we want? We wanted a lightweight vector tile schema. We wanted to create vector tiles without a database. We wanted to use vector tiles as map libre. And we wanted to create raster tiles from the vector tiles. We don't have priority on having daily updates because many clients don't ask for them and it makes things cheaper. Existing vector tile schemas, there are basically two uh, important vector tile schemas on the market. There's the Mapbox vector tile schema, it's proprietary and therefore it's no choice for us. And there's the open map tile schema by, by MapTiler. It is licensed under a Creative Commons Attributions license, which is a no-go because we do not want to advertise for our competitor. It, it needs Postgres to generate the vector tiles. It needs a customized Impossum version. Um, they recommend Docker to generate the vector tiles because the setup is very complicated. And the schema documentation is incomplete. They document which layer they have and which attributes they have, but it's not easy to find out how the individual OSM objects end up in the vector tiles. So we created our own vector tile schema. It's called Shortbread. Because it's simple, no database is required for generation of the vector tiles. Our schema license requires no attribution. It's just the what the fuck public license. And um, extra features should go into separate vector tile schemas. We have currently released version 1.0. And this is the vector tile schema documentation, uh, full with all the features, individual feature classes. Um, just have a look at the website. Um, we have almost all map features in the tiles which are needed for basic mapping, uh, for having a background map on the internet. So boundary labels, street polygon labels, addresses, points of interest, labels for water polygons and places, boundary lines, streets, aerial ways, water lines, but also buildings, land use, and sites. The layers uh, with a blue font on the slide are sorted by the importance of the feature. So for roads, it's basically the layer, whether it's in a tunnel or on a bridge, and the road class. For water polygons, they are sorted by size. The data sources, the main data source is just an OSM extract in PPF format, but we also use two shape files from osmdata.openstreetmap.de. It's a simplified ocean polygon shape file and the ocean polygon shape file. And um, we provide an additional shape file for administrative boundary labels, which we once computed using Postgres uh, because uh, TileMaker which we use for, to generate the tiles, does not support a uh, point on surface function. It only offers a centroid function and that's not suitable for countries with very distributed polygons. So you might end up with the label of the country being outside the country itself. The vector tile generation, we use TileMaker in its latest release, but 
if you want to generate short tiles, you have to compile it with an, a special flag to enable sorting. Um, to generate vector tiles for the whole planet, you need 400 to 500 gigabytes of RAM. But I will show later in this talk how you can save memory. It needs about nine hours on our fastest server and about 30 hours on an older one if you output the tiles on hard disks. It seems that we have now another sound problem. Okay, that's fine. Um, splitting the planet into segments uh, makes compute computation of the vector tiles um, less memory consumpting. So um, you need more time or you, ha you need multiple servers in parallel, but you can get it working with 64 gigabytes of RAM and it's a little bit easier if you, ha if you have 128 gigabytes. For segmentized tile generation, I, re I recommend to have a filtered planet dump for the zo zoom levels n zero to seven and, and about 15 rectangular overlapping extracts of the world for zoom levels 8 to 14. You should not um, split by degrees to have equal area covered by the extracts, but you should look where most OSM data is located. Otherwise, you won't save memory at all because the largest extract um, is the reason why you need most memory. You should renumber all extracts and the filtered planet dump with osmium renumber to save even more memory. But TileMaker isn't the only option to create shortbread vector tiles. You can, uh, can also create them using a special flex style for OSM to PGSQL for data loading and use T-Rex or any other software to, to export vector tiles from the database. Or you can use Planotiler but Blender Tiler has limited shortbread support. It is not able to sort the features in the layers, so you will end up with a wrong rendering order in some rendering libraries, for example, Mapnik. You can try the vector tiles out. They are available for download at download.geofabric.de. Um, it's a little bit hidden and only available for almost oh, for the extracts. So if you go into an individual country's page, for example, Austria in this case, uh, look into the section other formats and auxiliary files, it, you will find a link there. Shortbread isn't a geofabric project anymore, it's a community project. In parallel to our development of the vector tile schema, um, the people from Versa tiles, Michael Kreil and Sebastian Vollhans um, created a new tile storage format called Versa tiles because they wanted to have an easy to host vector tile stack. They started to use shortbread as a schema. They also created a, vec uh, a map style for Map Libre, which is available on GitHub in, in three or four different colorings. And they offer Versa tiles or shortbread tiles for download as MB tiles and in their new versatile format. But not everyone can use vector tiles. For example, legacy map clients, in this case it's open layers too, but you could just imagine of any embedded software or complicated business settings. For these clients, which we also want to, uh, to serve at Geofabric, um, we tried to get vector tiles working with Mapnik. You can use uh, vector tiles as a data source with Mapnik's Node.js bindings, but they are dif difficult to get them work. Um, there's a GDAL input pl plugin for Mapnik. This works, but it has some pitfalls. Um, you may not uh, use driver prefixes in front of the pass as suggested by the documentation of GDAL. Um, it has strict requirements for the metadata.json file. Uh, it also needs um, entries in the metadata.json file which describe which layer has which geometry. Otherwise, for each, uh, for each call, it does a full scan on all vector tiles. This may take a couple of hours per tile. And um, the past 
to the po uh, the path to the vector tiles must point to the directory of the zoom level because um, you cannot um, tell Mapnik which zoom level to use. This means that you have that you, that you have to have um, one map style per zoom level. Um, Theorex 0.8 a supports this, so you can uh, give it um, one map file per zoom level. Makes the configuration a little bit difficult, and it makes it difficult to style maps at all. Cosentic doesn't support the vector tiles used used uh, with GDAL at Mapnik, so you have to um, render them with Nick 4 and you need some script to um, generate the XML styles. You cannot just use Carto. You first have to um, pre-process the MML file um, in order to call Carto to generate the XML map styles. This is the short web map mix style. We developed it um, is well, a bit inspired by OSM Carto, but a couple of years before now, and has a different coloring. It's available on GitHub. And you can see it on at map.geofabric.de, there's a style called GF Basic Color. It's pretty much the same one. So, how long does vector, vector thruster con conversion work? Uh, take with Mapnik? So you can use it for live rendering. Um, the times are a little bit longer than uh, native raster tile rendering, I would say. But if you have a difficult and he heavy map style like OSM Carter, you may take as much time as, as here. Use, uh, you see uh, uh, differences between zoom level 4 and 5. This is because at Zoom level five, a lot of new features are added. For example, water polygons are available from Zoom level five and larger, but not on four. And um, uh, after Zoom level 14, um, the duration of each meta tile generation goes down because um, vector tiles are generated for Zoom level zero to 14 only. So if you request tiles for Zoom level 16, Mapnik will access uh, the tiles for Zoom level 14. Currently, you can use Mapnik only if your vector tiles are available as individual files on the disk. This is a problem because you need many inodes and you will have file system overhead of about one terabyte compared to an MP tiles or other vector tile storage. Under development, there's now a support for open options of GDAL in Mapnik. I will create the pull request after this conference. This makes MB tile storage usable. And I'm working on a native vector tile input plugin for Mapnik. But that's not ready for uh, GitHub yet. The future um, segmentized processing of the planet might become a feature of TileMaker in the next month. Um, we will transform the shortbread project to have a, some kind of project steering committee because it's going to become a community project. And um, we will offer vector tiles as MB tiles on the GeoFabric download server. And Future will bring us more map styles for shortbread. Thank you for listening to my talk. And now I'm open for your questions. Hi, uh, I have two questions. Uh, first question, are the styles you mentioned also uh, usable without uh, attribution? So that was my first question. And the second question is, uh, have you tried using Mapli Renative for rendering uh, raster tiles? So the, uh, the styles are available without attribution. You just have to attribute to OpenStreetMap. And um, we already operate Mapnik a lot for our normal raster tile servers, so we wanted to keep the uh, stack simple. Or, well, simple isn't it, but not to get it more complicated. More complicated. Oh, 
Yeah, so uh, if you do have a look uh, at that at some point, uh, uh, send me a message or something, because a lot of people are also using uh, Mapliber Native for, for that purpose. And maybe we can have a chat during the conference. So, okay, thanks. Our questions? How complicated a map do you think you can get with the short red schema? Obviously not something of the nature of OpenStreetMap Carto, which is probably a good thing, knowing what it's like behind the scenes on that. But how, how far beyond the basic web page locator map do you think you're going to be able to go with short red? So I think barriers are almost the only feature missing in the vector tile schema you would need to render OSM Carto. I haven't tried to um, rebuild OSM Carto with shortbread, but it should be possible to get pretty close to it. Yes? We have still time so for some questions. It's okay. Hi, I'm interested in having vector tiles for like just specific features like all the drinking water fountains around the world or all the bicycle pumps or stuff like that. Would that be possible with shortbread? There's a POI layer in shortbread and we have quite a lot of additional attributes for points of interest, but we don't we don't have opening hours. But uh, I remember that we have um, the type of recycling in it. Mm. And but it uh, you please look up in the documentation. It's complete. Okay. But would it be possible to use the software stack to like build my own vector tiles, but then which are very real time, like minutely updated, but only about one specific point of interest? It's possible to use the, uh, the, the software stack to generate your own vector tiles with a different schema. Um, but for minutely updates, you should use something different than TileMaker because TileMaker first reads the complete planet. You should rather have a look at uh, the option I um, explained with OSM 2 PGSQL and its flex style. <laughs> yes, uh, and then you can use T-Rex or any other vector tile generator to export the tiles from the database. All right, thanks. And I want to add, um, OSM to PGSQL has an option to generate tile expiry lists, but there are, there are other options as well. Um, hello, uh, yeah, I, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, I think so. Um, so no new question, because I'm new to the domain. Um, I want to know whether I can use the vector tiles for HD map features. Uh, by HD, I mean uh, like lane counts, uh, specific lane um, uh, lane widths, stuff like that, or uh, lane markings. Um, the vector tiles don't contain special attributes for roads. Um, we have uh, the surface, the reference number, and the name in it, and whether it's a bridge or tunnel, but we try to avoid to have more uh, additional attributes because if in OSM a road is split into two ways because the text change, for example, the first part has two lanes and the second part has three lanes, um, they will be merged in the vector tiles because the lane attribute is missing. This makes map, map rendering easier and uh, helps to get a nicer map because you don't have many short line strings, but one long line string, which makes um, labeling the road easier. Uh, I have a question in the continuing on the same thing. Uh, do you um, think of adding uh, plugins to short bread for uh, adding extra layer with extra feature, for example, bicycle road that need a split uh, as you say, the road uh, in small part, uh, and uh, if we add a uh, plugin for um, extra lay plugin for uh, bicycle uh, cycling, uh, we need to duplicate a feature uh, um, to duplicate geometry, for example. Uh, first, 
do you think uh, there will be a, a plugin for extra layers? And then how to solve this need uh, to avoid duplicating a geometry or things in extra uh, layers? That's one issue. And that's one problem with vector tiles. If you want to have additional attributes for features which are not available in the vector tile schema, for example, whether it's whether the road has three or four lanes or whether it's a bicycle road, um, then you have to duplicate the complete layer uh, and duplicate the geometries. Or you have to generate your own vector tiles by just patching um, the uh, tile maker configuration. Yeah, the first question is was about uh, for the simplest case, uh, adding extra layer in the um, infrastructure rather than uh, forking the project. If you want to add an extra layer, then you have to fork the project. Okay. <laughs> Okay, there's still time for a little question, if there is any. Oh, okay, last one. Hi, uh, yeah, sorry, you might have answered this already, but how large is the disk space required to store the planet in the short bit schema? In MB, in MB tiles, it needs about 70 to 80 gigabytes. And if you store them as individual files on an X3 file system, then you need about 1.2 terabyte. Okay, cool. Is that down to Zoom level 14 or uh, lower? Or? It's from Zoom level 0 to 14. All right, cool. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Michael. Thank you, and uh, we can move now to to the next uh, speaker. And if you haven't got uh, any, uh, yeah. um, we have new craft member t-shirts at the Fosters and OSM Foundation booth in the exhibition hall over there. Uh, and if you want to get a new one because your old one is worn off or you don't have one at all, then come over to our booth um, and donate 10 euro. Thank you.